Hello, welcome to Sophie & Co. I'm Sophie Shevert Nate. Over three years after the tragic earthquake and tsunami that shook Japan, there is still no peace for the victims. Whole towns fled in the wake of the catastrophe and have no hope of ever returning home. How do you cope with a catastrophe of this scale? Well, my guest today is the former mayor of the town of Futaba, which co-hosts the stricken Fukushima nuclear plant, Mr. Katsutaka Idogawa. On March 11, 2011, a powerful earthquake and tsunami shook Japan, causing one of the worst civil nuclear disasters in history. Despite relief efforts, radioactive material from the crippled Fukushima plant continues to flow into the surrounding environment. Once populated cities in the area are now ghost towns. Will it ever be safe to come back? Does the government still remember the victims of the crisis? Mr. Idogawa, thanks for being with us today. Now, your town of Futaba was heavily dependent on cash coming from the nuclear reactors. You yourself approved the building of more reactors. Now, did you believe back then that something could go wrong? Yes, I suspected it might, but I never expected an accident of such proportions. You said before that you knew right away that the government and TAPCO, the plant's operator, would lie about the consequences of the accident at Fukushima. When exactly did you lose trust in the authorities? Was it when the accident happened or was it after the accident, judging by the reaction of the government? This happened when I first met the management of the Fukushima power plant. I asked them about the possibilities of a nuclear accident, pretending that I didn't know anything about it. And it turned out they were unable to answer many of my questions. Frankly, that's when it first crossed my mind that their management didn't have a contingency plan. It was then I realized the facility could be dangerous. Mr. Iragama, um, I would like to go back in time. March 11, 2011, the day of the devastating earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan. Where were you that day? What do you remember? I wasn't in Futaba that day. I was in a town nearby, on official business there. And that's when the earthquake hit. What exactly did you see around you then? As for the aftermath of the earthquake, there were no destroyed buildings or other wreckage. But I saw all that on my way back to Futaba. As soon as it happened, I jumped into my car and drove home. I managed to get there before the bigger tsunami came. It was only later that I realized that I escaped the massive wave. I don't understand that when a catastrophe of this scale happens, it is very difficult to control your emotions, it is difficult to get hold of yourself, and it's really hard to know what exactly to do. But what were your first actions? The earthquake was very strong. I just kept thinking, if it's that strong, what will happen to the power plant? What if the reactor is damaged? What if there's a leak? What will the city do? What am I to do as mayor? I mean, I can only imagine how much worry you felt at that moment. But still, do you remember, what did you do right after the disaster hit. It took me 20 to 30 minutes to get back to my office in Futaba. There was a traffic jam, so I chose an alternative route along the coast. At that moment, I wasn't thinking about anything except the fact that I had to get back as soon as possible. I heard a tsunami warning on my car radio. Tsunami waves in the area had never been higher than 60 centimeters before. I thought that even if it's big, the wave would be about 6 meters at most. I had no idea the road I was on could be washed away by the tsunami. I got lucky. The tsunami came after I drove off that road. I got to my office in Futaba and started checking for damage. I checked every floor, and on the fourth one, I looked out the window. Usually, you couldn't see the ocean from there, but at that point it was just three to five hundred meters away. 
It was a truly terrifying sight. I had all these thoughts swirling in my head. What should I do? How do I evacuate people? Where do we run? How do we save ourselves? And I realized that the power plant would be damaged and didn't know what to do if I was serious. Looking back, I think I didn't deal with the crisis well enough. I think I did not ask myself enough questions. As I understand, you gave orders to evacuate the city right away. Yes, I didn't sleep at all that night. I was watching television since it was the only source of information. I kept thinking, what should we do about the radiation from Fukushima? How should I inform and evacuate people? Mobile phones didn't work because there was no signal, so radio was the only way to get any information across. On the morning of March 12th, I announced an emergency evacuation. I thought that radiation would not reach the mountains and we would be safe if we left the city. I told people to head to a town just 50 kilometers away, to Kawamata. There's just one road that goes there and it was packed with cars. Later, I learned that not all Futaba residents heard my announcement. I feel incredibly guilty about that. Back then, I believed that residents would be safe in Kawamata. It is much further away from the plant than the government recommended evacuation zone of 10 to 20 kilometers. Later, I found out that the Fukushima prefecture has withheld a lot of information. And now the government isn't taking any steps to ensure people's safety from radiation, and it isn't even monitoring the implementation of evacuation procedures. But you decided to evacuate people from Futaba as far as possible without consulting anybody, so you completely assumed responsibility. Our city always had an emergency plan in case of a fire or an accident at the plant. Every year we had special drills in case there's a fire at the plant. I think it's the central government and the Fukushima prefecture authorities that bear the brunt of responsibility for what happened. And as Futaba's mayor, it was my responsibility to take care of the people of my city. I had no time to get any advice. I tried talking to prefecture authorities, but there was absolute chaos. It was impossible to hold a meeting. So I chose to act on my own, and I decided to start with evacuating people as far from radiation as possible. Your town has moved to a new location, to the neighboring city of Iwaki. Is it safe there, and do you see this as a new start for these people? I'd like to show you a table with radiation levels around Chernobyl. Radiation levels around Fukushima are four times higher than in Chernobyl. So I think it's too early for people to come back to Fukushima prefecture. Here you can see radiation levels in our region uh, Tohoku. This is the epicenter of the earthquake and the radiation radius is 50 to 100 kilometers, even 200 kilometers in fact. Fukushima Prefecture is at the very center of this. The city of Iwaki, where Futaba citizens moved, is also located in Fukushima Prefecture. It is by no means safe, no matter what the government says. Exposing people to the current level of radiation in Fukushima is a violation of human rights. It's terrible. But nevertheless, evacuation advisories are started to be lifted for some cities in the Fukushima area. But you're saying that the government is allowing this despite the danger of radiation? The Fukushima prefecture has launched a come home campaign. In many cases, evacuees are forced to return. Here is a map of Fukushima prefecture with areas hit by radiation highlighted in yellow and you can see that the color covers almost the entire map. Air contamination decreased a little, but soil contamination remains high. And there are still about 2 million people living in the prefecture who have all sorts of medical issues. The authorities claim this has nothing to do with the radiation fallout from Fukushima. But I demanded that the authorities substantiate their claim in writing, yet they ignored my request. There are some terrible things going on in Fukushima. I remember being touched to the core by the plight of the victims of Chernobyl.
I could barely hold back tears whenever I heard any reports about that terrible tragedy. And now, when a similar tragedy happened in Fukushima, there is no one to help us. We must not forget the lessons of Chernobyl. We must protect our children. I talked to local authorities in different places in Fukushima, but no one would listen to me. They believe what the government says. While in reality, radiation is still there, and it is killing our children. They are dying of heart conditions, asthma, leukemia, thyroid complications. Lots of kids are extremely exhausted after school. Others are simply unable to attend PE classes. But the authorities are still hiding the truth from us, and I don't know why. Don't they have children of their own? It hurts so much to know that they can't protect our children. But I understand many children who have been evacuated are now living in the Fukushima district again. New schools have opened for these children, and you're saying that they're facing radiation there. Is anything being done to help the children affected by the nuclear fallout? Officially, both the central government and the prefecture authorities say there is no radiation. They're not doing anything, and they're not going to do anything. They say Fukushima Prefecture is safe, and that's why nobody's working to evacuate children, move them elsewhere. We're not even allowed to discuss this. All right, Mr. Dogawa, thank you. We're going to take a short break now. We'll be back soon with Mr. Idogawa, former mayor of the town that's home to the stricken Fukushima reactors, to discuss how the governments handle the situation and what more there is to be done to contain the disaster. Stay with us.